There we go. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Jason and Michelle's Cooking in the Kitchen and Talking Real Estate. And we are waiting for Nicole to join us. She's going to actually run the show today with all the cooking stuff. And I, I screwed up her ingredients. It was supposed to be vegan. We will let you know what the vegan ingredients are going to be. I thought I had time when I took a Con Ed class today on VA loans, and I thought I had an hour to shop and got so interesting it ran long. So we had to deal with the ingredients that I have in the house. But it will be a hybrid. It will be a hybrid. It will be good. But we're going to do a close up on Jason right now, and he's going to do uh, an update on lending and what's going on in the market. Yeah, so hey everybody, it's Jason Jenkins with Union Home Mortgage. Uh, what we've seen in the hottest news right now is rates. Rates have been on the rise uh, basically since last Friday. We've seen rates go up just about every day. Um, I've been predicting for a while now that I thought we'd be to 5% by May, and unfortunately, how you look at it, I'm right, I think. Uh, we're currently around rates around 4.75, 4.875. Obviously, some factors with credit score and loan to value are in there. But other than that, market is still real hot. Um, you know, we're, we're still seeing multi offers a, a lot. Uh, and we're still working with our buyers to get them in the best position possible to be able to get that offer accepted. Um, but that the little rate hike has really uh, thrown a craze into some people. Uh, we've been reaching back out to clients. We've been in contact for a while. And if you're a real estate agent or you're a buyer who's been pre-approved, and if it's been a while, you may want to get that updated. Uh, I did send out some stats today to some agents based on where rates are at now as compared to where they were like six months ago or even three months ago. And a lot of people have lost about seven to ten thousand dollars in buying power. Meaning, ah, it's huge. Right. So since rates it's have gone huge. up, you just really need to know where you're at because a lot of, you know, a lot of loan officers will max people out and tell them, hey, they're good to two fifty. Well, as you know, if right. they're looking at two fifty, that probably means they're spending two sixty to two seventy. So you want to make sure you can do that because, like I said, rates are really, really close to five percent. And if you were pre-approved at four to four and a quarter. Most likely that where you want that payment to be or where you want that purchase price to be has down, gone down by about eight grand. So that's the big news this week is just rates are trending, you know, I guess if you want to say it the wrong way. I mean, it's, it's a healthy thing in my opinion. It means our, our economy is in strong position and they're at a point where the Fed had said early on this year, they plan to raise rates and they plan to do it every quarter. And I, I think we're going to see rates continue to go inch up. I don't think it'll be a drastic rise, but you'll see them go up. Do you think it's going to be as volatile as it used to be, where it went up and down and up and down and up and down? Yeah, I don't think so, but no. rates also, unlike back in those days, there's other factors that come in, like what, what's happened in Europe, China, all of their areas, like things that, like when Brexit, Brexit happened in London a while back, that affected our rates, you know, so there's things that come into play. It used to be, oh, watch the 10-year treasury, and I'll be able to tell your rates you're going to do the next day. Well, it's not always the case. Now, right now, right. bonds are going like this, and that's why you're seeing rates this. Um, but I just don't think you'll see that volatil volatility, but... I remember back in the day, first of all, I gotta give a shout out. Brad Stinson is watching. Um, so he's like, wow, did you did you tell him that? Because I just, I flew from class. He taught a class today on VA loans, which is something sure. that we do, and I, and um, hi, Brad, and I told Jason you gave such a good class today that I'm going to harp on it during today's um, show. But um, back in the day when it was bank go time, our rates were really volatile, weren't they? They were extremely volatile and um, they, uh, uh, in the same day, the rate would change two or three times. Within yeah, the same day. Definitely, yeah. You guys don't know what that's like. I mean, Jason would say, now Jason, I've been, for you new people, I've been with Jason my whole career. and. Um, he would call me and say, if your clients don't walk in now, I don't know what it's going to be this afternoon. Like sometimes it would be for an hour. Right. Remember that? Oh yeah. It, it would be for a freaking hour. They would drop the rate and then you're done. You missed it. Yep. So if you were at lunch or if you didn't pick up your phone call, you missed that rate lock. Yeah. Right? And, and to be honest with you, I mean, that still can happen. I mean, rates like way, way, way back in the day, the price was set at 9 a.m. and that was the rate. Right. And then when everything got crazy in the early 2000s, that went away and you had midday price changes, sometimes for the better, mostly for the worse. And that can happen today. I mean, our market, well, I wouldn't say it's volatile right now. I have had a client that I quoted rate on Monday. Uh, I want to say it was 4.625 and then they, they didn't call me back until today and now the rate's 4.875. And he was pissed off, excuse my language. That's all right. But I had forewarned him. I said, hey, just so you know, this is the rate right now. It's just like the stock market. Stock prices, rates, do this and that. So it is, 
and that's why when people are shopping around too, like I've had, you know, and I've been the beneficiary and loss on this both ways, but where clients would call me on Monday and my rate would be here and then they'd call somebody else on Wednesday and rates have gone up, well, Jason's rate's better. Well, literally no, our rates are probably the same because it's, it's 14 hours later, but it's just, you gotta make sure. I was sending, uh oh, That's right, it's your it's, phone, not it's, mine. It's, it's silence there. <laughs> there the um, only time that someone's rate is probably better and they're not, they're probably not telling you that they're quoting like a point by down, right? right? So you want to make sure you have all the facts. And so some, and, and I will tell you the lenders, I, I'm just gonna say the lenders that are probably doing something not, um, not all the way correct or they don't want to be shot because they're doing something wrong or they don't want you to know what they're doing, let's put it that way, will tell you not to shop the loan. They will tell you that if you shop the loan that it's gonna hurt your credit rating and that is a big, uh, big untruth, big untruth. You do get the right to shop your loan. It will not hurt your credit and if a lender is telling you don't shop your loan because it's gonna hurt your credit, you're probably with the wrong lender. Would you, okay, I know you can't say anything. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, I will say, because I'm a realtor, I won't say anything bad about a realtor, he's not gonna say anything bad about a lender. I will give you the truth. And yeah, so, I mean, if they're nervous about getting shopped, and I would think there might be something there that they'll, because like, you again, welcome it, you're like, go ahead. I, yeah, I mean, I want people to be educated. Right. You know, and why I feel I'm very, I can give them all that education, I want them to hear it from someone else because they just meet with one lender, they have one lender's perspective. And hopefully that lender's giving them the best advice they can, but, it's not always the case. Well, you know, and when you feel that way about realtors, you shouldn't meet with just one realtor. Mm -hmm. And and I will tell you, many, many, many people will shop their listing uh, realtor. They'll come in, they'll say, how much are you gonna charge? What kind of marketing are you gonna do? Whatever. Mm -hmm. Very rarely do they do that for a buyer's agent. And you have every right to do that for a buyer's agent. Yeah. Um, first of all, I'd like to mention that we are drinking the good wine today. It's really good too. It's cake bread, so, uh, you know. This is my favorite. And Nicole stuff. is late, and I don't know if there's gonna be any leftover for her. So, but anyway, um, when you're, when, there is differences in buyer's agents. So not only are you looking for experience and experience in the area in which you want to be. So for instance, I just went to a class for VA loans. I would consider myself educated enough to be able to help. No one's, there's still too much to know on VA loans. I don't think anybody, every, I don't think a lender knows everything there is to know about a VA loan, but I know the right questions to ask. I know where to direct you. I know where, if you're not getting the proper benefits that you actually earned. Okay, so I know that. So I could say that's an area that I do specialize in. I'm just not an expert. All right, so there, um, I could say that I specialize in first time home buyers. I can say that I specialize in ADA. Mm -hmm. All right, so those are the things that you want to look for. But also, I can tell you, everybody will say, does it cost you, it cost you anything to use a buyer's agent? Does it cost you anything to use a buyer's agent? Well, I have a hard time with that because the majority, I don't, I won't, I won't say all, because I'm sure there's somebody that doesn't, but the majority of us charge a broker admin fee. Yep. So there is a cost to use a buyer's agent, and everybody's broker admin fee is different, isn't it? Correct. So I will tell you, ours is 240, and I came from a larger uh, brokerage, and they were a little less. They were 199. I don't know if they're still 199. You would probably know. I believe so, but I mean, I've seen so, a range from 199 to 595. I've seen them as high as 650. And that's part of your buying fine. powder. So that, that can be rolled into your closing cost of prepays, but then you're probably not gonna get something else paid for if it's 650 bucks or 595. Right. So it does cost you to use um, a buyer's agent unless you know the broker isn't gonna allow the agent to waive that fee. So I am blessed to work for a, uh, a small boutique brokerage we are small in size, not in education and expertise. And um, we charge a broker fee. It's how we stay in business. It sure. pays the bills. You know, everybody thinks, oh, they get all that commission, but we don't. And so it helps with, you know, paying the bills and keeping the upkeep and all of that. Uh, but we won't let it break a deal. Sure. We will waive it if it's going, and, and you will waive things if it's going yeah, to, we won't, can, we won't yeah. let things, whatever we're allowed, right? right? Whatever sure. we're allowed. Um, we won't let the deal go. I know people that won't waive anything. They just say tough. Sure. And so um, I just, I'm on a little bit of a bandwagon because I learned about these VA loans and I learned a lot about some untruths that were told to me because lenders wanted to be able to make as much money as possible without giving the, the veteran who so deserves all of the benefits they possibly can. 
And because the way that the loan was structured, it made it hard for the VA loan to get accepted by sellers when we're in a competitive market. And here I come to find out, it doesn't need to be the way that we've been writing it. Sure. You know, so I was really upset about this. So I am gonna harp a little bit on this. <laughs> As Look you out. all know. Look out. I know. So we're gonna keep talking because I don't know what we're making because <laughs> Nicole's coming. She was at a presentation. So Nicole is joining us today and she is with Seniors Moving Smarter. Now, Seniors Moving Smarter, I believe developed probably right around 2008, I would have to ask, but um, from a realtor, because I think what happened was is our market crashed and um, Liz got into something else and I hear Nicole running, I hear my door, so I think Nicole's here. And she could tell you more about it, but they were doing really good things. They were helping seniors move. And it's really, really hard to like, it takes a specialty when, you know, there's a, a NAR designation to be a senior, uh, real, you know, to help seniors mm -hmm. uh, in real estate. And I can tell you my first senior appointment that I went to, um, the woman was there and uh, her husband had died. And so she had to sell her house. It wasn't an option. Mm -hmm. It was, she had to sell the house. So I go in as, you know, Michelle and, you know, we're going to take down this wallpaper and we're going to stage it. Well, she started to cry. And I didn't know why she was crying while her and her husband had put up that wallpaper. I was not sensitive or empathetic to the situation. So taking the classes to be able to learn how to help seniors moving and understand the challenges and things, because a lot of them are leaving their family home that sure. they've lived in, For trying to downsize and get rid of things is really, really hard. And so, um, but anyway, that's, uh, so they grew that business for seniors moving smarter and the kids the adult children of the seniors who are 40 50 years old sure. that are our age said you guys did such a great job we want you to move us but we don't want a senior truck in our driveway <laughs> <laughs> and so what was born then was their other division of moving smarter and um will's facing me will is there someone down the hall did you hear that door there's no one here? I see her actually coming in the front door right now. Oh, she's trying to come in the front door. So Jason's gonna to talk to you just for a minute and I'm gonna to have to open up the front door. Uh -oh. So yeah, so you're gonna to have to talk a little bit. I'm not very good at that. Yes, you are. So one thing I just wanna kinda of go off what Michelle was talking about with um, when they say buyer, buyer's agents don't cost you anything, she's talking about um, you know actual cash, but what a buyer's agent can cost you, if you don't have the right one working for you, they can cost you thousands on a home, on a home purchase. There is over 3,000 uh, realtors in, in Kent County right now, and there's some good and there's some bad. And uh, you know, that's why you just gonna make sure you're working with an experienced person. I was just saying how buyer's agents can cost you money. And yes, they can. Money. But I'm saying if you don't have a good one, they can cost you Even more money, or the loss of a home. Exactly, yeah, so especially in today's office. So Nicole's here. Nicole, you've never met Jason either, have Jason, you? Jason, nice, nice to meet you. you. So they've met like, you know, virtually, but not in person. Virtually. So we're drinking cake bread wine. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. <laughs> so I decided it's to really come up with good stuff today because we've all decided we've had a rough long day. Oh, so, yes. Thank so, you. Thank you. Look at Jason's already down one glass. Cheers to a family. We're going to pour him session. up. So. Well, we needed you here because we don't know what we're cooking. We don't know what we're cooking. So. Le petit croissant. There we go. There it is. Say that again twice. So. Cheers, and we're going to start cooking. All right. So very fun. So. Nicole, first let me just say who's here. We have um, Evan who's here, Julie Rossio's husband, who is my What's Cooking GR uh, friend. We always host our dishes and What's Cooking GR, and Evan is just as uh, popular. Awesome. My sister is actually watching. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Debbie. Yeah, she's down in Florida, so um, never get up here. Terry Bishop is here, Megan Hurley. Steve Kick. Hey, Steve, how are you doing? He's here. Kim Tucker is here. Wendy Doctor, we all know Wendy Doctor, right? Oh, she you might know. not. But I don't know. Do I need to know Wendy? Yes. Yes. You should. She's Wendy was cooking with us, and she made it. She made the show seem professional. So <laughs> From the, she, it was professional. The cooking part was professional. That's right. She like had like you know had stuff already pre-cooked. So then we put it in the oven. She pulled it out, and there it was finished. Oh my gosh. We're like, yeah, Wendy, we don't do Wendy, that. Wendy, don't she show says, us up. Wendy says, "Hi guys, what's cooking today?" So we are going to make, it's one of my most favorite desserts. I'm, I am I eat a vegan and we, we try to eat healthy. So we are gonna do some hors d'oeuvres that are um, sweet potatoes broiled. So you've got the crunch and you've got a little bit of girth in them. So they're gonna, they're gonna hold, their, hold their own. Then we're gonna sprinkle them with a dill infused vegan mayo. 
So Maybe no. So oh. here's what I did. I I thought I would have time it's to go shopping. vegan mayo. <laughs> we're gonna forgive her because we love her. We have vegan blue cheese. Oh, yum, 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 yum. Yum. Yes. yes. So I have vegan in my house all the time because I have a vegan son, as you well know. And uh, the class ran long today that I was in as your presentation ran long. So I'm like, I don't have to buy vegan mayonnaise. I know I have it. Well, I don't have it. Okay. So we got we got avocado mayonnaise, which is really Still good. Here. And I also got, I thought we could substitute the vegan blue cheese, which is delicious. It will be really good. Now, I have, when I use olive oil actually to eat, eat like salad dressing or something like that, mm -hmm. I use a really good olive oil. Now, I did not get your request of the type of olive You like Rachel Ray olive oil, don't you? I like, no. The olive oil you told me to buy is made from Rachel Ray. Oh. You didn't know that? I mean, I was just saying like a general like extra virgin olive oil. Oh. But it's okay. No, I like, I, I like a good okay, olive oil Okay, so too. good olive oil. So I get like a big Costco kind if I'm cooking or frying. Okay. So it's less expensive. And then I'll do that. But if I'm actually going to eat You're raw, gonna, right. then I like a really good olive And there are differences, aren't there? There are the huge olives. differences. So and then she also asked for a cucumber, but we got avocado. And... Will, you and I are going to order pizza. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be so good. And I thought you asked for garlic, but maybe not. No, it's going to be great. So we have that, and I'm going to go look for the dill while you and Jason start doing what you do. you need to peel the potatoes, though? No, I do not peel them. I never peel anything. It's a lot of work, and I don't always have a lot of time to do that. We do need to wash them, though. That's fine. We can wash them. But if you don't peel them, the veg the, the vitamins are all in there, aren't they? Right. So you want to? we're going to preserve mm -hmm. the vitamins. We're going to keep them healthy. We're going to give them a good scrub. I mean, this looks like a good scrubber. We want to make sure we've got any residual dirt and, you know, ick off of them. I don't really like my but, potatoes with ick, so. Yeah, we're going to do this for you, Jason. Good. We're going to do this for you. So for Jason, we're going to wash these little suckers. Yeah, that's basil. Give them a good scrubber. Hey, we can use basil. Basil, dill, they're green. They're good. I like her. She just on the run. The side of the cheese. Well, good for I the show. I thought Basil left in for our show. I, I'm sorry that we missed our show last week, by the way. I got that semi flu that was going around. It's horrible. Oh, we all got to wash our hands. Yeah. Yeah. So, if Dave Bryan's watching. I did twice. Did you? Did you? Okay. This is a liquid hand soap. Dave Bryan is a real person who watches and, and he gives us a shout out if we don't wash our hands. Dave, we're watching for you. Yeah, we're watching for Dave. Okay, I don't have a really cool cooking apron. Do I get a cool cooking apron? No, no, because... No, she does. But she's actually cooking, so she can have mine. There we go. So you can have that one. I, I don't... Yeah. Let's leave oh, right. my house, put them all away, and I can only find two. I don't know what happened to them. This one's not so good. So no, it's fabulous. There we go. Fabulous. We have that. I need to get some, like, with, you know... Your logo yeah. and your brand some? Yeah, I have to do that. So, anyway, so... I think, oh, Angie is watching, and oh, while we talk and talk, I want to tell you, I have so many things to say. See, I've been off for a week. Okay, you talk, I, I'm going to start, I'm going to put these in oh, little no, potato yeah. medallion. All right, so you want to help, you don't want to help her cut? I can do whatever. So you've got a, you got like a big veggie chopper. I right? do have a big knife. I do. That, that little knife is sharper than you would ever imagine, though. Well, so, okay. But that's okay. So I was at Verizon. Because I got a new red Verizon, you know, signature phone. So I was at Verizon, and Angie and I are sitting there talking. And Angie works there. She comes from a very big Italian family, and she's very loud like me, so we get along really well. And no one hurts anybody's feelings. She's loud. She's bold. You know, she, you know, no bullshit. And I like that. And she likes that about me. I don't hurt her feelings. She doesn't hurt mine. It's very rare. And so um, we were talking about working on commission. So, and she was talking about, do you need a bowl? Um, I will, yes, I'll take a bowl and then I'll take a, like a, a, a cookie sheet or oven pan or, okay. okay. So, um, so we were talking submission. So how many times, Jason, did, have you seen on Facebook where you did a loan for somebody, it went really, really, really well, and then you just saw that they closed on um, a new home and didn't, they didn't talk to you. Fortunately, not that often, but yes, it has happened. And you're crushed. You're like, oh. You are, you are, is that because of the money, though? No, is no, it? no. It's because they went someplace else and you were know, and then I start thinking, wow, did I not take care of them or what have you? It really hurts your feelings. Yes. It really, what if someone else was 
was moving one of your clients. How would you feel? I mean, I've got a knife in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. <clears throat> it really does. So, it's, so it, it's about loyalty, right? It's about loyalty. It's about loyalty, and it's about... So Angie and I are sitting there, and we're talking about this, and, and a lot of people, most people know that Jason works on commission. Most people know that I work on commission, but I think a lot of people don't know that the Verizon people work on commission. Mm -hmm. And they do work on commission. So she was telling me, and this also happens. So she was telling me that she would, um, so they, they go to get another phone and they go somewhere else to the Verizon and then that Verizon doesn't get as much customer service. So they'll buy the phone there and then they'll go see Angie to help with their needs. Oh. And Angie gets no money for that. So the other salesperson just got all the money but did nothing and then they're asking Angie to do things for them. Sure. And I said, well, that happens to me because I have someone that decided to use their niece that just got into the business last month, and it's not going well, shocker. And then they'll call me and go, Michelle, can you help me with this? Because she doesn't I'm like, no, I can't. One, legally I can't. Right. Two, no, you decided to go use her. That was your option. Right. And I know that happens to you all the time. Oh, yeah, because does. Jason knows a lot about lending. Right. You and, know? I, and I have this. I don't mix business with friends and family. Mm -hmm. I just don't. So I think my family knows that, yes, you might be in the business, but I'm sorry I'm not going to use you because you never want, even if they're great, even if they're wonderful at what they do, you never want to have that element of something went wrong, even if it was out of your control. Right. And it, it mars that relationship in some way. You just don't want to do it. So then everybody just knows. Like, I will hire my friends. <laughs> I will hire my friends. Well, you know, my you know what? And it helps. If you have that rule, it helps you. Um, it helps you keep everything in perspective, and, and then it, you don't have to worry about being loyal. You don't have to worry. So you're not going to ever see him, but my husband just walked in the door with his McDonald's, and he's really happy. So <laughs> Jason's <laughs> wishing that he was with him instead oh, of eating this. <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's and bourbon. That's where I'm going. Right? <laughs> McDonald's and so, bourbon. So you see what she did? She did oh. olive oil oh, yeah. and garlic. A little bit of garlic. So I, I cut our... Sweet potato medallions into about a quarter inch thick. You want them to be thick enough that they, they hold their own. They're not going to get too flimsy because you're going to eat them by themselves. They're going to be like your little plate. They're going to be your transport right into your mouth. So I sliced them up. I put them all in a bowl here. Okay. I poured some, eat, uh, some really, really good high quality olive oil on them. And then I put in a little bit of garlic because you can never have too much garlic. It's so good for you. It's, it's good for your body. It's good for your breath. It just keeps away the naysayers. Hold on. It's great. Good for your breath? Is that what you said? Yes, and I think oh. this very physician. Oh. I was like, okay. Oh, yeah. I was like, did you see me? I'm like, oh, I, I, no, yeah. it's horrible. Absolutely horrible. <laughs> but it's so good, and it's so good for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to toss these up. Do you have some tongs? I do have some And do you have parchment paper? I do have parchment paper. And do we have the oven preheating? That I did. Good job. I did do that right. So, so anyway, Jason, you were going to say something. No, I was going to say, the other thing I like on your commission comment is when I've had this happen numerous times to my own company and to agents I know where they're like, well, I used Remax. Let's just say that their other realtor works for Remax. And I'm like talking, well, that doesn't do your, your realtor any good. Right. Well, I used the same company. I used you in the mortgage. Well, yeah, but you didn't use me. Right. You know, so it's just like, you know. No, it's not good. the same thing. And, it, and you guys are independent, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so, and most realtors are independent. Oh, so, God. you know, Angie and I were talking and Man, she got it, like, within a minute, what I was trying to say. And so you work with the Gordon Group. You think the Gordon Group is fabulous. Now your family member just went and got licensed. Refer your family member to come work with us and learn from us. So a friend of mine, um, Bev, who is a realtor, um, I know she won't mind me um, saying this, she um, had a client that bought a whole bunch of homes during the foreclosure time, and the plan was to buy these homes and then sell them. Mm -hmm. And so she helped him buy all these homes. Which she, I have to tell you, buying bank-owned homes was a lot of work for a little money. <laughs> all right? So her reward was going to be when it was time to sell. Sure. All right? So it was time to sell, and this gentleman's nephew got into the business, and she mm -hmm. got cut out of it. Now this guy is brand new, and they don't know what he does not know. Right. And he doesn't know. So they may feel like it's going really well. They may feel like there's no problems. Uh, there might be things that could have gone better. They could have made more money. There, I've been in business for 16 years. I still remember my first deal, and I still am. Uh, we just sold a second home to um, our our uh, first client ever. My daughter went and took them to buy a cottage, 
And he kept the same lender, he kept the same realtor, he's with us the whole time. He had told me, I finally divulged to him that he was my first real client. And he says, I had no idea. Could I have done something better at that time? I bet I could have. Now, he bought my very first bank owned, mm -hmm. and the company that I worked for at the time was Keller Williams. I was um, agent number 33, and I was the first brand new agent they ever had. Back then, it was all these seasoned, yeah. high-end realtors. No one could help me on the bank owned homes, so I had to read a lot. Sure. <laughs> I had to figure it out. So I think we did good, he bought well, everything was great, but you need another one, don't you? I do, but I also, I don't know, does anybody love salt? Yes. Like an affinity for salt, I love salt. So I have kosher salt or I have pink salt? Low oh, pink, pink salt is good. Okay. Pink salt. Pink is salt, with, like a Himalayan salt. It is supposed to be very pure. Okay. Um, I think I have pink salt. And if you don't, that's okay. I know I do. So what happened was, is that they really cleaned out good um, my house because I had a photo shoot yesterday so we had to stash everything. A photo shoot for what? Because we're going to sell the house. Oh my goodness. Yes. So we are... Do you have a good realtor? I, think, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there is a magazine called um, Cascade Life and here we're going to have to use sea salt. So there's a magazine called Cascade Life and uh, um, Lee Hunt is the publisher of that magazine and she's... Hi Lee, if you're watching, I know Lee too. <laughs> and she is just really fabulous at what she does. And so they do a home of the month and Michael Koistra, who's a good friend of mine and also a realtor for Keller Williams, you know Michael. Yep. He writes about the home of the month. Mm -hmm. And I said, go ahead and feature my house because I'm going to put it on the market after we sell the condo. And so my husband and I want to build a sprawling ranch because we're getting old and doing all these stairs is killing us. Yeah. So, um, and then we also want 10 acres. So it's so funny. We're from the city. He's from Philly and I'm from Miami and we never thought we wanted any acreage. And then we moved to two and a half acres and we went, oh my God, that's so much. And now that we have two and a half acres, we're like, oh, now we need 10. It's like, it's like closing in on us again. <laughs> and so, um, here, give me one more. So we're good with this one. Because if you want to put this in, yep. now what is the oven that you set out? Three fifty. Three. Let's do it higher. Let's let's kick it up to four fifty. Oh, so you're gonna give it a few minutes before when that turns. Oh, no. You can still burn it. It'll still start. We'll be okay. Yeah, you'll okay. be okay. We'll just get it going. All right. So four fifty. Did you hear that, you guys? Got it. So, so we're gonna do it at four fifty. Oh, how long are we doing that for? You know, I'm gonna. Let's say. Let's say a good 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Depends on how crispy you want your sweet potato medallions. If you want them really crispy and they're a little bit thicker, you want to go 20 minutes or so. If you're okay with them having a little bit of a, a little crunch to them, 15 mm -hmm. minutes I think should be fine too. Gotcha. So okay, we can test. So we'll do Alexa. Are we trying to redo Alexa? I knew it was coming. Right. Alexa, put 15 minutes, please. I was watching America's Funniest Home Videos. First try? Yes, Alexa understood me. Alexa First got time. you. Yes. Alexa doesn't like me. She likes everybody else. Oh, no. She likes men better than she likes me, too. Well, I can't even imagine. <laughs> so I told everybody a little bit about what you do. Okay. And I told you know, about seniors moving smart, smarter. And then I thought it was really, I told the punchline because I think it's really funny. I told everybody that, that their kids wanted to use your services but they didn't want a truck in their driveway that said senior <laughs> so what was born in what's the what's what's the name simply moving smarter simply that's the part simply moving smarter so tell everybody a little bit about what you do so seniors moving smarter was born in, in 2006 because moving is the third most stressful like i need some of that on here can we sprinkle that yep. so moving is the third most stressful life event that anybody can do besides death of a loved one and divorce there's a lot that goes into it emotionally, mentally, physically, super hard. So Liz McCulloch started Seniors Moving Smarter in 2006, really focusing on helping seniors with that transition, um, whether it's still staying in their own home and downsizing, or if it's downsizing their home of 60 years and then moving into a retirement community. So as Liz is a MSW level social worker, I'm a BSW. Um, most all of our team are college educated women. And then we have Carl or muscle, um, who's also a realtor too. And we really focus on helping our clients with the emotional and mental components of moving, helping them come up with a plan, making sure that they feel empowered, making sure that the, that the decisions that they're making are theirs. And then we come up with a plan to help them downsize if they need to have an estate sale, if they need to sell their stuff. Um, we do a lot of measuring to help them figure out where they're gonna be 
where the things are going to fit in their new home, creating that floor plan. And then when they're ready to move, we actually do all the physical packing, the moving, the unpacking, the setting up, right down to making their bed. We pay particular attention to how they layer their blankets on their bed to make sure that it's how they want it. I have a specific way of how I like my, my blankets on it. When we remake their bed, we do it that way too. We, we watch and see. Isn't that nice what they do? Yeah. I don't know anybody else that does what you do. I don't think there is anybody else. I, you know, I think that we've, be, being that we've done this, I know, so I just remembered. So anyway, not only is she so detailed, but uh, you know, if if you were setting her up with your mother or your father, wouldn't she be a pleasure to be around? Yeah, definitely. I know, because you're so upbeat, you're so love you. Uh, you're so like really cool to be around and so much fun. Okay, Nicole wants to know what you were drinking, so she came late, so you wanna get the bottle and show your lovely wife what he, his wife was Nicole too. <gasps> I love her! Yes. Yay! So here we are drinking cake bread cellars Chardonnay. It's, so Nicole. It's really I, good. I, I, is, and Nicole, there's not gonna be any for him to bring home. We've sorry. all had I'm a really sorry, long day and, and we're gonna be day. drinking it all up. So you should have been here. I don't know why Where you're is not she? here. I don't know. Four Where miles away. I we I talked to her before I came and we got kid stuff and I just you know, it didn't work out. So we like and then Angie from uh Verizon was telling us. Right there, Cadoba, Firehouse Subs. Firehouse Subs are delicious. Oh my gosh. Yes, they're really good. We're about 26 and 28th Street. So, anyway, um, fun. So, I bet Angie's going to be one of our guests next time. So, she cooked the time. When is Angie going to be a realtor with you? I've already tried to be a realtor with me, and I have tried to read Angie, her. what are you waiting for? <laughs> this is good stuff, Angie. <laughs> if you could go to work every day, and it's okay if you're working, because I paid Verizon a lot of money over the years. Jason's watching. Jason Lovell's watching. That's his other um, counterpart. And Monica's watching. Steve is watching. Leslie. So Leslie is probably someone that you should get to meet. Leslie is my cleaning person, and she's really, really I, detailed. Yes, yes. Leslie, so. I need to meet you. We have to connect. I'm sure I could give you a lot of clients if you're looking to add to your, your client repertoire. Leslie probably. likes, yes. <laughs> Leslie likes um, one-stop shop. Like, yeah. she... I had to talk her into having a cleaning relationship with me because she didn't want to do a long-term relationship. She had to talk her into I it. I had to talk her into it. Like you had to court her? Yes. With why? Yes, I had to. <laughs> so I had to. She was like, no, no, you know, I kind of do the site cleanups and I do this and I do this. Yeah. No one cleans like her at all, oh. period. So um, back to what you do. So let me, let me ask you a question. So say that I'm buying this house and uh, I'm not buying this house, but I'm writing an offer uh, for someone and I'm negotiating closing closing costs and prepaid. Could her cleaning services be a prepaid? Would that well, be allowable? It would be a prepaid because a prepaid would be your taxes and insurance, but it could it's possibly be a closing cost. Could it be a closing cost? I said it the wrong way. Could it be a closing cost? Yeah, I mean, depending upon your lender, how they're going to look at it, I mean, it's something that could be uh, shown as a charge, just like an inspection on the closing disclosure. And most likely, if there was enough consular concession left, you could use it. So I bet you didn't know that. So what happens is, is I go into this house and I know that it's dirty for one reason or another. It's vacant, it was, you know, whatever, whatever, it was left dirty, or the seller's just not a clean person. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> and it, and it happens. Life happens, right? It happens, and they usually know that they're not clean. That's not like a shocker to them, yeah. so right. don't be embarrassed. Right. Right. I have like negotiated a cleaning service and to be able to put everything together afterwards. And so we could probably negotiate some of your services part of the deal. Now, 
we're in a very competitive market, so it probably wouldn't work right now unless our house was sitting, but there's still homes that sit. Mm -hmm. And then I could right. probably, or I, there's ways to make you part of the deal is what I want you to know. Bless your soul, Michelle. <laughs> Well, we are we cooking today? We are cooking up some great business deals over here at Michelle's house. I know, right? <laughs> Isn't it funny? Business. So we really can. There's a okay. lot of things, and I think I think other agents are watching this, and there's other lenders that are watching this, and I think they need to know. We have um, Sue Timmer that is watching. Fritz is watching. Hey, Fritz. Do you know Fritz Ball? Fritz the realtor? Yes. Yeah, I don't you know. know. I know. I know. Fritz, Fritz and I get turned Paul in. Fritz. Fritz and I, I get that. turned in all the time about um, our our logo oh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, do you, what do you do in that? So, in the state of Michigan, the law is is that so I'm the Gordon Group, the team Gordon Group under the umbrella of JH Realty and mm -hmm. Jake Evelyn, my brother, right? Mm -hmm. So Jake has his name, and then I have my name, right? So back in the day, before they really, this law always existed. They fine-tuned it, and it never said, it used to say that your broker's name had to be present at the same time as your name so the public would know who your broker is. Mm -hmm. So it was to protect the, the consumer so they would know who the broker is. So over time, the broker name became this big, and the Gordon Group name became this big, right? So mm -hmm. over time, so then the state of Michigan said they didn't like that, who was Laura. Right. So Laura said they didn't like that because now the broker's name is so small, no one sees it. And now they think that the Gordon, I'm just using my example. I never did this. I'm just using my name as an example. You know, the Gordon Group now looks like they're their own brokerage and they're not because we can't see the broker name, yada, yada, yada. So they came out with um, a bill that was inclusive of a whole bunch of other things. It wasn't just this. This was one of the things that got thrown into the bill. Um, that that the broker name would be the same size as the team name. Okay. All right, so sometimes it's hard to tell because my font's different. Your font's different. So, so sometimes font looks bigger, but actually it's the same size. So mine doesn't do that way. Jake's font is different than mine, but his font looks bigger than mine, so I don't get turned into that. But Fritz, if you're watching, baby, look at, he, he's saying, I've been turned in four times in the last two weeks. I will try to beat you, Fritz. So, All right. You so. know what's about that, Fritz, is that people are watching you. They're seeing you. And they feel like they feel threatened by you, Fritz. So jealous. maybe this is a good, they're jealous of you. I don't know you. I should know you. And we've got to definitely make a point to meet. But, you know. Yes. You would like Fritz, actually. Would I? Yeah, because he's got the same kind of energy as we do. So, doesn't he? Do you know him personally? I know him from way back. If it's the Fritz I remember called Fritz. It was his advertisement. And is that you, Fritz? He was at Remax, I think. I, I, we met like once, like a long, long time ago, so I don't. Yeah, so he uh, so he gets turned in because his font looks bigger than the other, but it's not. Right. So he, we were both in the Lowell Expo, and I have to tell you, mm -hmm. if there's ever an expo to do, do the Lowell Expo. It is amazingly fun. It is, um, it's a community. It's an expo second, it's a community first. And so people are coming out, the, the community comes out and says, thank you for sponsoring this, we appreciate you. I've never been to an expo where people thank me for sponsoring it. You know, incredible. so it's, they're just, they're just really cool. And so, oh, Jason Lovell's making fun of you. Jason. Uh, no, no he's, he's asking, Fritz is asking my last name. That's what he's saying. Oh, he's oh, so Jason Money. So, okay, now you have to tell your story because I'm saying it. Can you tell your story. I'm going to get a bowl and start mixing up our dip. Oh, okay, go ahead. So tell me why they call important. you Money. So. I, I feel like if we're going to be friends, Jason, I need to know all about you. And nicknames <laughs> are no to the rule. Well, it started because our very first show, some kid from my high school, which I just had my 25 year class reunion, so it's been a minute, just a got on here and called me J Money, which was my high school nickname. And honestly, it was because. Where'd you go to high school? Williamston, on the other side of the state. Okay. Uh, my jump shot was money. Money? I could shoot. Okay. And then it stuck with me because I lend money, J Money. It's not really that interesting. It, 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 it was so just funny because this kid I hadn't talked to since high school called me that, and she said, somebody just called you Jay Money. And I just started laughing because I was like, what? I'm going to try with a little blue cheese. Yeah, we are. I'm going to try the vegan blue cheese so we can definitely make it vegan. So just spelling out what vegan is, that there's no animal products, byproducts, and anything vegan. So eggs are included in that. There are There's eggs in this particular mayo. 
Um, but there's no dairy, it's, it's an avocado base. So I'm gluten free, dairy free. My son is vegan, and then so this would be the vegan option that I'm going to do. So I have the blue cheese vegan, so it, I think it will taste good because it will have like cheese in it. So I think it will taste good. Um, we, Fritz says, Y'all send me a friend request I got to get back to work. Okay, so oh. he wants to get to know you all. So Fritz, I think we should have you on the show. So um, also, let's see, Michelle Fields Harmon is there. Hi, Michelle. And so um, I'm gonna send out our products here. You can see what we're putting in. There's a little bit of basil. I mean, more salt because salt's good for us. All right, so I'm gonna get the is basil. Better, is, what's better, salt or garlic? I mean, it's to each their own, Jason. J money to each their own. J money. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, so I'll put a little sea salt in here too. Okay. And then, um, what else? We have garlic. So I yeah, I put a little bit of garlic. So in my in my mix here, I've got mayo, salt. Okay, salt, salt is discretionary. I love salt. I probably put a good teaspoon in here. I also put a teaspoon of basil. You can also use dill, uh, parsley, cilantro. They all, I think, will do the trick here. We're gonna whip this up and see if you have a spoon. Please steal spoon. I'll give you. Um, I'll give you the real thing. The real thing. I'm gonna whisk this. There you go. Yeah. So we're gonna whisk it together. We'll see how this looks and then taste. Uh, the key is definitely always taste testing. We can bring it a little bit more. So. <laughs> So Jason, how many loans did you close this week? What is today? Wednesday. Ah, huh. uh, well, we just had one close at three o'clock, so we've had five this week. You have five. So out of the five, how many were conventional? Four. What was the other one? FHA. Oh, see, I would have thought FHA more than the conventional. No, and I how mean. How many be a mover? Let's talk about that too. No, I, I'm with you. We need to have a conversation on this because I don't even think about that and I need to think about that. True story. Um, the, the, well, as you know, as you mentioned earlier in the show, with government, most listing agents go, oh, government, ah. So we've been trying, we've been doing a lot of that home ready product I talked to you about, a 3% down conventional, just because many listing agents don't want to take an FHA. And so, uh. I mean, it's, and and, and I, sometimes a stronger buyer is FHA. You can't look at the loan product anymore. Back, you know, I think, okay, I think this is what's happening. Back when I started 16 years ago, FHA took longer, VA took longer, all those government loans took longer, the inspections were a pain in the ass, let's put it out there. It was sure. just, it was bad. It is no longer, no longer, no longer, no longer. So you got people that are old school that still remember it and can't get it out of their head that teach the new people that it's a pain in the ass loan and it's really not. What's the quickest you closed an FHA? 24 days. I need that answer. But so. the thing goes too is, is FHA still can be a pain in the ass depending upon your lender. However, it's not anything like it used to be. Dismissed. So you're right, it used to be. Alexa, dismissed. You know, and just to clarify for those listening what FHA means, it's Federal Health Administration, it's a governmentally insured loan. Mm -hmm. Majority of personal home buyers will go that direction. But what's different than a conventional loan is the appraisal is done subject to, meaning if I have the appraiser go out and I find some things that aren't up the FHA code, they have to be done by the seller before a close. So a lot of sellers are like, nah. You know, and granted, it's, it's, it's health and safety. So it's peeling paint, broken panes of glass, a bad roof, bad furnace. So things that you want fixed anyways. Um, but again, the perception is that it's really bad. So what we've done, because we have to, is if any lender, any customer we can get to a conventional, we do, just to help them win the bid. Even though FHA sometimes can be, could be better for them. I mean, typically FHA is, is, is a last resort, but it's not a terrible product. It's not a terrible product. No. Oh, and just sideline, Fritz said he was going, but he didn't go before he said, Vegan is un-American as shit. So <laughs> I know I need to get back with him now. So, Fritz, Fritz, I mean, we recorded there for a minute. We officially just broke it up. I mean, this is probably a quicker relationship than, like, Bachelor Nation. But we're done. We're over, Fritz. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, we're, we're good, though. Uh, it's funny. A lot of people are asking what you're making at Kimmy Late. So at the end of the show... I'll have her like type out what we made and how we made it and 
the real ingredient since you know you can actually it's like, like a hybrid i think it's gonna be good i think it's yeah. gonna be good too i really like what we have so avocado my daughter most recently amanda has lost a lot of weight and it's by one of the things she did was make avocado pudding every morning mm -hmm. so it's avocado almond milk and um what is the other no she didn't oh honey you're right she didn't sweeten it yes and she has that every morning workout yeah and she's been doing that forever so I just bought like or Patricia just bought a big bag of avocados and so that's why I had a ton of avocados avocados are incredibly good for you uh, so so what we're making it's an hors d'oeuvre it's a small plate it's um essentially it's sweet potatoes they're broiled so they're a little bit thicker they're they have a little bit of a crisp to them um, salt is always at your discretion I love salt I just do it's family trait um, it's got a, a, a layer of dip so you can We've done like a, a mayo, it's really like a basil infused mayo dip. Do you have any lemon? I do have lemon. We can do a lemon basil infused mayo dip and then we're gonna top it with a slice of avocado and then we're gonna top it with a little bit more basil. So we're gonna eat it like a small plate. It's gonna be, oh my, beautiful. This girl has everything, this kitchen is to die for. I um, like to cook. I um, cook all the time. Yes. So, so I have it. I cook like three different meals at every meal because nobody ever seems to want to eat the same thing. My That's family. My house. Children. Children. Um, so I pour just a little bit of, of lemon in here. But what I've got then is mayo infused with salt, a little bit of um, olive oil to thin it out, a little bit of lemon. It's going to add just a little bit of like a kick to it. She's a natural. Some basil, <laughs> some lemon. Um, She's not camera fat. Not even, I tell you, great presents. All right, Love now you. I'm not gonna put lemon in the blue cheese because that doesn't sound good. No, probably not on your. No. So we're gonna lime might though, and I don't think I have any. Ooh. Ooh. Well, we could do even do like one of these days. We could do a cilantro lime one. Ooh. Ooh, girl. It gets too frigid. Like just. Someone's in the kitchen with Michelle. Someone's in the kitchen. Over <laughs> <laughs> oh, a little lime. Yeah. I've been in the kitchen five times, and the first time I noticed it too frigid. Oh, you're so funny. Oh my gosh, this is like, really, really good, people. So I have a fridge downstairs, but I'm not allowed to put food in it because Mike says that's for his booze. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm not allowed to. I, I, I try to sneak food in the fridge downstairs, and he gets, like, yeah. angry. Like, literally angry about money, food being money, in the booze money, refrigerator. Yeah. Yeah. the booze of food. <laughs> I mean, you don't want to take up a space for intoxication. <laughs> right. It's really, like, a serious thing. Yeah. So, anyway. uh, I got it. Fumble. Thank you, Fumble. I fumbled What was that show? Slippery little sucker. Um, so I think some of our smaller <laughs> sweet potato medallions are ready to come out. We'll grab those in just a second. If you have a spoon, we can scoop go. out our avocado slices. We can layer these up and we one? can start tasting. Yeah. So I've taken our avocado. I've sliced it in half. I've de- yeah. I've taken it out. I've just done a slice. We'll scoop. We'll scoop out our slices. Those look beautiful. Um, oh, you have a spoon. They look I really can good. slide these out. That's how I do it too. I'm just gonna grab one and see. Yeah. So, they're, so if you see, they're pretty. They're a little bit flimsy. That's how you want them. They're really hot. Um, you don't want them to be too hard. Then you're biting, and they've still got a little bit of like a un, uncooked, like a raw crisp. And you don't want that. So for those of you that don't make sweet potatoes, like I don't know, my husband's maybe eaten a sweet potato three times since we've been married for 29 years. Oh, but that. sweet potatoes get really sweet when they get when they cook. Like really sweet. So yeah, their their sugar is caramelized. So right, like, right. So when you're cooking, I don't I don't I read I don't know about you, but I read cookbooks like people read novels. Like fun, yeah. Yes, I like, do. Like it's fun for me. I, I have like I have time. books and books and books. Oh my gosh, I, love I knew them. we were gonna be best friends. And I like to buy the old ones. So um like I have I have this one cookbook from the 70s. It's a vegan cookbook, and it, they talk about um, using um, pot in their cooking. <laughs> the vegan existed that long ago. Oh my God, vegan has been around for a long time. It's been around for a really long time. So you're dabbing now. I'm, all I'm, yep. And so do you have like a? Can I steal one of your white platters over yes. here? Yes. I'm all about making sure that our plates are dressed beautifully because again, presentation is key. Michelle sells houses. We stage and downsize houses, so we want to make sure that they look nice. I and think that's true. Food is food is no exception, folks. Okay. So I'm going to, with my very very clean hands, I'm going to grab these. 
And who, who gives us hair today? Dave, Dave Ryan. Her Dave, hands are clean. My hands are so clean. We're yes. going to set these out. We're going to maybe just streamline these down the middle here. We're doing various medallions, but all within the kind of the oh, same size. Look how pretty that is. We're going to take our avocado slices. We're going to just cut them in half so they fit. And I'm going to layer them, just making a, a brief X. Oh my gosh, you thought I'd watch so many cooking shows. Who am I? <laughs> we're just going to we're just gonna layer them with an X here, folks. Okay. I like that. And then we're going to take, and so we need one more layer, one more pop of color. Okay. One, you can never, again, never have too oh, much really salt. Like salt. I found it. I stole it. Oh, good girl. Okay. And then okay. we're going to take a little bit more basil, and we're just going to pop the basil on the plate here. Voila. There it this, is. This, friends, is what we call le petit croissant. I don't know what it means, but I heard Julia it Child say it once, cool. and it made me really happy, and it made me want to eat it. So we're gonna try it. You have to eat some. I will eat. And if it's, okay. and if, if it's horrible, I apologize. Mmm. <laughs> it's good, actually. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Right. We did it, folks. We cooked, so we didn't stab anybody. We're good. Right if you like what you see, tune in next week. It, so uh, I hope it's going to be at three o'clock at Wednesday. So <laughs> if we're not, it's Jason's fault, not mine. And um, um, if you want to get a hold of us for lending, Jason, how they get a hold of you? You can get a hold of me at six one six. Let me which one? Three two eight six seven zero eight. Or email me jjenkins at unionhomeworries dot com. You want to get a hold of me? I'm Michelle Gordon. Call or text six one six four four three zero five nine six. And if you want help with moving. You can call us at seniors slash simply moving smarter, seniorsmovingsmarter.com, simply moving smarter .com, simply moving smarter .com, or Nicole Swart, 437-1385. Thanks Happy everybody. Thank you. Happy cooking. Really I didn't really think I was